Hello and welcome to IBM TV. I'm joined today by Simon McGrath, Senior Vice President and Commercial Director EMEA at Deluxe Entertainment Services. Simon, welcome to IBM TV. Thank you very much. If you could start by just telling us a little bit about Deluxe, please. Yes, um, so Deluxe has been around for over 100 years. We were founded at kind of the birth of Hollywood. Really, um, as an entertainment services company to support the, the nascent Hollywood film industry. And so we were there to, to take um, film take reels off cameras, take them to labs, process them, get them out to theatres. So that at the very heart of our, of our business is about, as a service industry, taking content of the highest quality of the most recent kind and moving it to the consumer on behalf of our clients, the, uh, the content creators. And what's the latest products and services that you've been launching? Well, our DNA goes all the way back to that creative process. So our company is split into two very distinct parts. Our creative mm -hmm. side, where we have um, uh, facilities, brands that work in uh, creation, post-production uh, across the world. And then the other side of our business is really about once that creative process is completed, how do we get that content to the consumer, whether that be in cinema, whether it be in television, whether it be via a Blu-ray disc or, or whatever it may be. So we have very much a focus on delivery and the delivery operations side of, of our business, where we have great heritage with um, uh, obviously theatrical distribution, now digital cinema into um, managing broadcast for content providers delivering onto platforms, the, uh, the platforms of Amazon, of Netflix, of Google and so on. And then obviously also now in, as well into um, live distribution with, uh, with some of our um, other more advanced uh, technology platforms. Okay, so you mentioned that you've been going since the birth of Hollywood. Yes, um, yes. What, obviously, we've seen monumental change in all of that time. What do you think some of the biggest challenges and advancements have been? Well, I mean, we've seen, you know, it's a cyclical industry. We've seen a change in distribution, change in creative requirements. Um, I personally feel that there's never been a more creative time in terms of, of content and a more disruptive time. We're seeing... We're seeing content going, which is created fundamentally for television, being screened in cinemas. Yeah. We're, so we're seeing all sorts of models changing. We're seeing, obviously, I mean, it, you know, you can't but <laughs> know it in our industry about the number of different formats and devices and how people are wanting to watch the content, you know, directly to the uh, connected television or onto an iPad or whatever kind of device it may be. And the challenges that those raise are is that happens in conjunction with development of new formats. So. 4K, HDR, etc., all orientated around creating a better experience for the consumer. So we have we have the creative tension of of producing amazing content, Game of Thrones with visual effects, with with very aggressive timescales for delivery, and you couple that with the consumer industry, um, consumer device industry that's saying we want to sell. Um, uh, larger televisions with higher uh, graphical performance, etc. So you get a wonderful tension here, and that puts great pressure on the supply chain. How do you get this content efficiently without huge capital expense mm -hmm. to to all of those devices? And that's where we fit in. We are we we sit right in the middle of that supply chain, um, and we provide services to our clients to help get that that content quickly, efficiently, and of the very highest standard um, onto the devices and to the consumer. I suppose consumers also expect that high quality as well now, don't they? Oh, they do. It's so Absolutely. Available. Absolutely, they do, yes. And that's, that's, our, that's our role, really. So you're, you're involved in virtual reality. It's mm -hmm. uh, one of the sort of key terms yep. at the moment for going around. Um, 3D was a flash in the pan and a bit mm -hmm. of a fad. Is virtual reality going to go the same way or is it here to stay? No, I don't think so because I think there are more applications yep. um, for, for virtual reality that we haven't even discovered. I think we're very early stage in, in the VR uh, world, I think the applications go beyond entertainment, they go into education, they go into health, they go into, into science and engineering. Um, and I think that we're just beginning, both in terms of the maturity of the devices you actually use, as well as how we create, how we distribute, how we make it really accessible for consumers. We've set up our own specialised virtual reality division, uh, focusing on this, working with our, our traditional clients, but also working with um, the advertising industry around what can be done uh, in terms of promoting new products, etc., using, using virtual reality. So we see it as very important for the future. 
Um, it, it is allied to what we've always done in visual effects in the post-production mm -hmm. uh, area. Um, but I don't think any of us really truly know where it's going to end up. But I don't think it's a 3D flash in the pan. Yeah. I, think it, I think there's going to be something much deeper about virtual reality. Yeah, That's exciting, our position. It's exciting, yeah. So uh, you also deal in media asset management. Mm -hmm. um, We've spoken about the amount of content that is available now as the quality of it and the volume mm. of it increases so much. What are the challenges that that presents? Size, yeah. I mean, <laughs> fundamentally. Um, media asset management has never been a, an easy business to be in. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time talking to broadcasters, to content owners and distributors, and media asset management is a challenging, uh, challenging space. That has only become more challenging with growth of, of, of formats which, well, not only many more formats for the same kind of content, so proliferation of versions, um, localization adds into that, so you know, we obviously now see greater consumer demand for good quality translations, dubbing, subtitling, um, and also um, file sizes. So we're seeing um, digital cinema packages, DCP coming out of the digital cinema world, being used for um, as a mezzanine format going into um, television distribution and, and, uh, and so on. So, File sizes are growing, that means greater pipes, um, time periods are compressing as content wants to go day and date on, uh, onto different formats, or series stacking, so you know, a platform will say, we want all of this content, all 16 yeah. episodes available at the same moment, yeah. and in a number of different languages. That creates a huge supply chain challenge, and from a media asset management side, not only the software, but just the sheer scale of content quality control around that and everything else, it raises some, some serious challenges and you know, it's exciting too. Okay, so you're involved in pretty much every aspect of uh, media and entertainment, I saw when I looked on your website. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I just wanted to talk to you about the live to video on demand briefly and yeah. the challenges that that also presents. It does. Um, so live to video on demand, I mean, I, depending on which part of the world you are, um, taking content from linear and putting it into catch up or into, into video on demand. S in some parts of the world they take it straight off the stream and, and, and do some very quick conditioning and then make it available on demand. In other places content is embargoed yep. and presented onto the VOD platforms and it's simply a publishing process to make it available to consumers. Now obviously that's not possible with live events and sport music, concerts, news, etc. And so the challenge there is it's, it's a workflow challenge, it's, it's embedding VOD and online technologies into the broadcast and um, upstream production process or upstream uh, broadcast process. So that does create, does create challenges and I think there again we, we, we see the challenge of taking in a, uh, a stream uh, a straight off broadcast and being able to convert that quickly, get it out onto, for OTT or TV mm -hmm. everywhere, or whatever it may be, out onto the CDNs and onto the origin servers in multiple formats, again with right quality, whether there needs to be encryption around that with DRM and packaging that's associated with that, and then move it again onto all of the formats, whether there needs conditioning around advertising breaks, so there can mm -hmm. be dynamic ad replacement, adds another complexity, whether the upstream broadcaster has the uh, SCTE markers in place to be able to, to do that. These are the challenges. Um, I think you know, we all know the importance of sport um, uh, uh, for, a, for a content provider and for consumers. So, so taking sport events, taking them into, into VOD and monetizing them, you know, tremendously um, efficiently, is, it makes it interesting. And again, you know, this is something which we focus on in, in, in the conditioning of content into, uh, into playback of, of VOD platforms. So I mean, pretty much everyone we've spoken to here has mentioned sport. And of live sport events. We've and just come out of Rio. And how <laughs> it's, but how stadiums are also becoming a lot more interactive and how people mm -hmm. can get a lot more involved. So it's a very exciting side of it. But what's, what's the future for Deluxe? Oh, I think the future for Deluxe is, well, as I said, we, we, you know, we are a, we are a post-production services company. We're a creative company. We have tremendous talent. Yeah. And we are building on that. And I'm sure you've all seen uh, announcements about the talent that we have inside our company. And then in terms of a service company for our, for our client group, and that's broadcasters, it's platforms, it's content creators, to be able to get their content in the best possible way into, into the client's homes or wherever the, where the consumer's homes or wherever they may be. And there's stuff in there which we invest in 
which our clients don't really want to invest in. We invest in media asset management. We mm. invest in HDR um, uh, technology. We invest in um, standards bodies around metadata tagging for content so that we can identify it all the way through the supply chain. This is the stuff which are where we play our role. And I think that unifying the entire supply chain experience so that content can be easily distributed to any kind of place, whether it be a cinema, whether it be a phone, whether it be a connected Samsung television with HDR capabilities, that is our role. And we try and make that complex process not just easy but invisible for our clients so they can focus on what their consumers want. Yep. You know, one example of that is what I found very interesting at the show is meeting with companies who are specializing in the audio components of playback. Okay. Because what we hear from, from our clients is that video quality can drop a little bit in, a, in an, for, for instance, an OTT experience, yep. but if audio quality drops, yep. then we, we've got a problem. And so there are companies here who we partner with and we embed their technology in our workflows who are focused on creating an audio experience second to none. Okay. And I think that gets lost a lot. <clears throat> and so yeah. we work right across the entire chain, metadata, audio, video, everything associated with just creating a better experience. And that, and that is our role in the, in the end to end supply chain. Okay, Simon, thank you for your time. Not at all, thank you. So from the birth of Hollywood to lots of exciting things on the future, you can find out more at buydeluxe.com.